Okay, so some of you remember I did a lesson on David Baker's How to Play Bebop 1. Here I got David Baker's Part 2. I think there's one more even in this series, but we're going to take a look at this and this that I already covered. So you might want to check out those lessons. Uh, and we're going to do that. We're going to use the some of the stuff from this, these books to play over Cherokee in a fast tempo or at a fast tempo uh, so that we uh, survive the fast tempo. I haven't talked about that before, but uh, I decided to pick a fast tempo for this lesson because it will show you that this kind of stuff really helps when you're being uh, challenged by a tune that is de very demanding. The chord changes are moving quickly, they're tricky, and uh, you need some kind of arsenal of tools that you can use to get through a tune like that. So uh, enough talking, uh, let's get started. Cherokee, and I'm gonna start by playing uh, just Bob Scales, which this book covers a lot. And I'm just gonna start on the roots and play Bob Scales. So here's a little backing track that I found online. Uh, it's not super, super fast, but it's pretty fast. It's medium up, I guess. So for me, it's a little bit challenging. And uh, so you have to bear with me if I'm struggling here a bit, but uh, if we decide to, or if we play Bob Scales over Cherokee, we get this right. So B flat, when there's a major chord, and then when you have a two five, I ignore the two chord and treat the whole thing as a dominant chord. And then I play a dominant Bob scale. B, B flat dominant Bob scale. Next up is an E flat major seven chord. Play an E major Bob scale. And then an A flat dominant Bob scale. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about here, check out my previous videos on Bob scales and you will understand. And that's pretty much it. There's a bunch of major chords and a bunch of dominant chords with its related to, which I'm always kind of ignoring. There's one place where there's a C minor to a G7. So then I'm just gonna play regular Bob scales. So also stuff that I've covered before, so you should be aware of this stuff, I guess. So here we go, uh, Cherokee Bob scales descending. <laughs> So as you can tell, I'm making it pretty easy for myself. I'm, I'm kind of moving the same shape around and which you maybe shouldn't do uh, ideally, but remember what I'm trying to do here is to survive this tune. Like imagine you're on a gig and somebody calls Cherokee at this tempo or on a jam session. You need something. I need to be able to just survive. So that's what I'm trying to do now. So I'm not trying to be fancy with different fingerings or stuff that will do that. But for now, just keep it really simple because the tempo is difficult enough so that I, or at least I need to keep things really simple here. And um, this also forces you to think about how you need to phrase these scales. I'm not picking every note. Most jazz players, I don't think, pick every note. I mean, you're kind of using a combination of slides and slurs and what have you. Right, so playing at this tempo, practicing this way, forces you to figure out how you're gonna do that to make it sound kind of 
jazz, right? So uh, moving on, um, and I made a PDF with all these, I guess little etudes you could call them. Um, so that was the first one, Bob Scales, and you can get this on my Patreon page. Uh, now, we gotta change things up and in this second book, he has a whole list of 251 licks, for example. Um, let me find it here. 101 favorite bebop era 251 patterns. So a lot of those. So th you can take any of these to use over the 251 in this tune. And then uh, he has, let me see here. Give me a second. Oh yeah, the major chord, 100 public domain major patterns. So I'm gonna take some of these and use them over the major chords of this tune and do something else for the dominant chord. So the first one here in of the major seven chords is this one. I've also talked about this before. I don't know where it's coming from. It's like a cliche that everybody plays. I don't know if it's the originally a tune or who played it first or whatever, but you hear it a lot. And we're gonna use that for the major seventh chord, so. And then the E flat. And so on. And for the dominant chords, I'm gonna go back to a previous lesson and the previous book and do Bob scales. And then throw in the David Baker phrase at the end. So just to mix it up a bit so it's not just scales. So that's also one of my previous lessons that David Baker, thank you David Baker, I think I called that lesson. So it will sound like this. try to do that at this tempo. getting a little bit sloppy for me so I was thinking about this lesson should I practice like crazy so that I can really execute these things or should I maybe show that uh, it is very difficult right so I noticed for example I having trouble with I'm not sure what I'm doing there so I need to sit down and figure out like why is it sloppy every time I try to do that and maybe change the fingering and uh, so that I can play because it, you know, those are the kind of things that will help you. Uh, you know, you find something that a problem area and then you work on that and, you know, that's how you practice. Uh, so let's move on here to the next. Maybe that one will go a little bit better. Oh yeah, so here we have another cliche from the major patterns. If I take the B flat triad and the fifth and I start from a scale note or a diatonic note above and then I go down two notes and I approach that note from below. So from above, below, and I 
go back and play from above and below and so on. So it's a scale note from, or a diatonic note from above, and a chromatic note from below. Also very common, you hear it all the time. So I'm going to do that for the major seven chords, and for the dominant chords I'm going to play Bob scale starting on the third, and then into the Donna Lee phrase. So let me try to do that over this ridiculous tempo. Okay, so that was pretty sloppy, but uh, yeah, I think you get the idea anyway. So, uh, you know, obviously you don't have to play this fast. If it's too fast, you pick a, what's challenging for you, or maybe this is too easy for you. Some people uh, have this uh, ability to play really fast tempos naturally, it seems. They don't, uh, they call sax players. Uh, no, but seriously, like it's for us, it's it's different for everybody. Some people really struggle with this stuff, and then there's some people seem to think it's easy to play fast. Also, there's a difference between playing fast and playing fast tempos, because I could play this tune without. I don't have to play fast, right? I can feel the time slower. <laughs> That's why a lot of people like to play these fast tempos because there's things you can do with the rhythm and the time that you can't do at a slow tempo. Plus, it's exciting. It's exciting with jazz played really fast. So, it's part of the of the vocabulary. You just need to be able to do something. And if you never play any eighth note lines, it's gonna be a little bit lame, right? So. Again, like I know some of you are thinking, well, you're just moving the same lick around, right? It's not music, it's not creative. No, but it's better, it's better than nothing. If I, don't, if I can't play any eighth note lines, I have nothing. Now, at least I have something. And then the more you do this, you start connecting the ideas. And then hopefully you can be creative with that. Also, I think personally, it's not whether or not you play a bunch of licks or not that makes you creative. It is how you interact with other players and how you uh, respond to what's going on. That's what makes you a great, a great jazz player. It's not whether or not you play cliches, right? So that's it. I, I digress. So let's move on to the next and uh, last etude. I have another major phrase from the book. And then uh, for the dominant chords, I play this 2-5-1 lick. It was on in the previous video, I made a bunch of 2-5-1 licks from this book. And this one goes, let me see. Uh, so it lands.
hands on that sharp 11. So. this uh, tempo and we'll see what the hell that sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 